There's one scene in Kelly Reichardt's Certain Women that leaves me unnerved. It's very simple in its approach, and upon first viewing, it plays out like any typical scene. The film is split, recounting the lives of four women, each in their own path. The middle story is about a woman named Gina. She's a wife and mother from out of town. Her relationship with her passive partner and her belligerent teenage daughter Guthrie. is a shrewd one. Guthrie. Guthrie. Come say hi, Albert. No. No way, Dad. Every time we come out here, you guys swear it won't take all weekend, but it always... She pines after the bricks of native sandstone that gather dust on Albert and confuse local elders' property. I hear them all the time. Their call is, is like, uh, it goes... Sounds like, how are you? How are you? And then, then the answer, it goes. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. <laughs> Albert holds dear memories of his childhood and his environment. He constantly brings up his experiences and the significance of the sandstone in conversation. While they might seem like useless memories for Gina, Albert holds on to them just like the sandstone. What's eerie about this scene is the reminder of mortality that piles up around Albert and Gina. Albert, so we were wondering about the sandstone in the front yard and if you'd be willing to sell it to us. <laughs> He's quiet and Reichardt feeds the tension through the silence. Have you talked to Kyle Yazzie lately? Albert ignores Gina and instead addresses Gina's clueless husband. There's a clear comment on women being the outsider, and Reichardt manages to fit a tale of politics, even in simple exploration. Each memory that Albert lets loose is doomed to dissipate, steam-like, back into the atmosphere of the present, when the best years of his life have left him. Here, Albert doesn't realize that Gina doesn't realize the significance that the bricks have for Albert, but neither will Gina's Gen Z daughter realize the significance that the bricks will have for Gina. The daughter holds up a mirror to her mother, reflecting back the sullen opportunist that Gina is. The daughter is as obsessed with the monotonously present unreality of her iPhone as the mother is stuck on her shiny dreams of grills made from the native sandstone. We did tell that we were going to keep her out here all day. God, she really can't help it. What? Making you the bad guy. Always. Whatever. No one within the film realizes any of this, but we see it all. Later, when Gina waves, we get this cold look from Albert. There's sadness in the uncertain wave Gina gives to Albert, whom she senses she may have wronged. Tucked away inside her victory lies a deeper defeat. While certain women and this story is unique in its nature, it shares the same quest to poke at the politics between people and their lives. Sometimes in her films, those quarrels are small, but almost always they are underlying only to grow with her exploration of the habitat in the forefront. Reichardt has the ability to make the mundanity of a parking lot into an event. In 2008's Wendy and Lucy, a film about a homeless Indiana white drifter and her dog. Throughout, we see she's convinced herself that her downward spiral is only temporary. And the film confronts us on what it's like to be a drifter slash dreamer during a post-Katrina America, a coal state, and if you're a woman, one of constant psychic violation. Don't look at me. I'm out here. Just trying to be a good boy. <laughs> Kelly Reichardt's deeply interested in time and landscape as well. Popular criticism of her work tends to focus on her usage of time as something as an endurance test for her audience. However, her style recognizes that time is not only used aesthetically, but also a question of the difficulty for the longing of change, whether that might be political, which in many cases it is. 
Landscape is critical in Reichardt's films, but less as another background or a binding tool to trigger a response than to place us in a very specific world, to make us see what the protagonist sees and feels at any given moment. Her films are intense portrayals of the inner life. There are unexpressed emotions hanging in the air. We wait for these, but we see her characters try to act on them. In fact, their habitat speaks louder than they do. But the brilliance of Reichardt lies with her landscapes as stage, and each line and linger from her characters being crucial to the story. Her films are special. Each line of dialogue in a Reichardt film is chemically refined to give only the minimum of exposition. While doing so, she's a maximalist of repressed passions. Her entire war has always been, in its way, about nature and how we've paved over it, and how in doing so, we're paving over ourselves. It's hard to think of a contemporary filmmaker more delicately sensitive to ambiguity than Reichardt.